uh, limit your open discussion now. I think I'm going to allow something like 15 minutes, possibly, 15 minutes or so. I'm quite flexible. So I've, I've got three hands up, okay? Four, five. So you'll have, to, you'll have to be patient with me. I won't remember. So I'll take people from this side first, and then we'll do it your side, yeah? There are three, there are two hands in this. Third one. So I'll take this, my, my right hand side. You, you're not talking before, so I'll take you first, yeah? I'll take you later, and you do the third, okay? So take them all together. No, no, no. I, no I, prefer, I prefer people to ask some questions. Yeah. My name is Majahat Ali Khan. I'm from Delhi Khabri newspaper. Uh, my question is uh, to Mr. Harvey Arbari, uh, that uh, uh, Balochistan issue is not uh, in UN Charter, so how can you raise this issue in UN? It's not in the UN Charter, so how can you raise this issue? That's uh, the point we have been speaking for, like uh, there are so many countries, they are not being represented by the countries which are supposed to uh, be representing them. Now, first of all, Balochistan was an independent state in 1948. It uh, had independence for nine months. So we are asking UN to also acknowledge that fact that Balochistan was a free country and we should get the status of occupied territory by the United Nations because this is their jurisdiction, United Nations jurisdiction, because there are articles, as I've seen, Article 32 and Article 40, uh, 33, uh, I'm not really sure about those articles, but when a foreign state invades, an, uh, one state invades another sovereign state, then international community, they have to intervene. We have seen that in Kuwait, what happened in Kuwait, when Iraq entered in Kuwait, the, the whole international community came together and supported the sovereignty of Kuwait. So we, in Kashmir. Kashmir was not a country. Balochistan was a country at that time. Can I just add um, um, to what just heard we are said? Um, look, since uh, United Nations, um, United Nations, um, of course, all, are, all nations are now represented in the United Nations. And our friend should know that the United Nations was just created in 1940s. Yeah, and since 1940s, how many nations you had? More, more nations been, uh, can become independent, including Pakistan, as you, you call it, okay? It was created by British Empire, mm -hmm. but it was after, okay? 1947 was 1947, and since then, in the last 20 years, how many new nations became independent? Is the just the basic human rights is inherent rights that is your right to determine your own future, not determined by one Pakistani Punjabi military uh, um, organization or mafia. Is basically is the question of having equal rights. Is the question of that you've been a, a a nation for hundreds and thousands of years, and then British, British Empire, it was one of the products of the um, dying British Empire, and the result is, what you have the result? The result for the six, 60 years, destruction, killing, instability, jihadism, and what else? Give me just one day, one day since this Frankenstein state, jihadi state was created, one day that you have stability. And if you count the number of people that suffered from Bangladesh, how many million people were killed by Pakistani? How many million people were okay, killed when Pakistan was created? How many people that, how many million people they were uh, became refugee when they created Pakistan? How many wars they had? Okay, and the suffering that we had was more than anything else for the last 60 years. And even the Islamic bomb was okay, exploded in Baluchistan in 1998. It's the question of the basic question of human rights, whether you've got equal rights or you haven't got equal rights. And there is no any other option apart from democratic way. Okay. I think
think on this side, I think you, your hand was up. And then somebody else put the hand up nice and give it a short time. And then Liz, you know, I'll take only four people on this side. Yeah, recently I uh, read an article in, uh, in Tamil. Can you say who you are? Can you stand up? <coughs> My name is uh, Risahan. Uh, I'm from Sri Lanka. Uh, recently I read an article in Tamil Nadu about Rajasthan. Um, USA recommended some self-determination or something. Can you uh, enlighten me about that, please? Okay. Yes, yes. Um, now, self-determination is your natural right, but the question of Benuchesan is not just a question of, because what you have in a state that occupied other nations, they've got some kind of pseudo um, um, literature, and they use um, terms like democracy, human rights, all these terms that have got different meaning in a same democratic individual than what they have. Baluchistan is basically occupied. It's, it's the same way that Germany occupied France. It's the same way, way Germany occupied Poland, another nation. It's exactly and almost, the, it was the same time as well. So how come for Baluchistan, because Baluchistan is far away and is not European nation, so for Baluchistan the right it should be less than any other nation. It doesn't make sense. So, yes. Okay. What I'm going to do now is because another hand came up here, so I'm going to limit that now. Sorry, I'm doing check. Gentlemen uh, here, and then Ali, and then Liz, and then I'm going to move the other side, okay? So you put your hand up here. My name is Mehrab. I'm a blogist and a political activist. <coughs> I have a question uh, for Khairbia. Uh, Baluchistan. Baluch has a state throughout recorded history. It's no mistake about it. Baluch has a sense record history of humanity recorded. Baluch always had uh, or have a state, recognized the state by the uh, others. And the Baluch, one of the nation who uh, had a sovereign state before the sovereignty of nation come uh, come uh, uh, along, always have a uh, central power of uh, center of power. Uh, Khan, we call it Khanet uh, Khanet uh, institution. Then my question is, what would take the Baluch to uh, Baluch nation to regain their independence and sovereignty again? What uh, Baluch should go through? Because that's a question Thank we should. Thank you very much. Very precise question. The fact is, Baluchistan's <coughs> political uh, boundaries were drawn almost 450 years ago by Nur um, Nasir Khan. So uh, we had political boundaries. We had uh, a state, a country. Uh, recognized by uh, all our neighboring countries, especially at that time there was Ottoman Empire. And they even recognized Balochistan as a sovereign state and had diplomatic relations with us like 400 years ago. And then after 400 years, Pakistan appears on the scene and starts becomes the bully of the bloc and starts occupying areas and uh, actively being part of all Jadi movements. So they, we, as a nation, we existed prior to Pakistan, many centuries prior to Pakistan's creation. And what we are doing for achieving sovereignty, we have to, the Baluch diaspora, the Baluch leadership, the Baluch nation should go to the world and explain it to them. Because what Pakistan has created in that region is havoc, destruction. And we want to make them understand. Look at Baluchistan's history. And there's been no war with our neighbors, no major wars, no internal wars. Look at the history. So we are historically a peaceful nation, defending our own land. Of course, we'll defend our land. Uh, in history, we defend it. Now we'll defend it. And we have to tell the international community we are there for prosperity, economical progress, and stability of the whole region. 
and they have to, they will support us. What is happening in that region today? Pakistan taking funds and uh, from the Western country and then using it against the West, uh, creating these Taliban, these extremist groups, and then funding them back with the money which the West has uh, given them for their survival. <coughs> so now the West has to understand that Baloch are their natural okay. in that region. <coughs> okay. Next, somebody. Um, Um, in uh, Turkey, um, what we have seen since 2001, and in particular since 2009, is a systematic, um, uh, the systematic uh, arrest of um, uh, thousands of people. But more significantly, in my view, is the uh, seizure and destruction of uh, archives, Kurdish archives. And that's all done under anti-terror laws. I think um, what's happened is, what they're trying to do here is basically to destroy history. And uh, what I want to know is, is whether such laws are used in Baluchistan in, in a similar way um, to, uh, to what we're seeing in Turkey. Very good questions. Uh, at least uh, your archives were there somewhere, but <laughs> for us, they have kept us deprived economically they have not allowed our language to progress for, it's been stagnated for the past 65 years under Pakistan occupation. So our culture has not progressed at all. And interestingly, our Baluchi language is taught in Baluchistan University as a foreign language. So it's not taught in the school as our mother tongue, or if somebody is interested in learning Baluchi, so it, he has to go to the university, he has to first study in Urdu or in English to, to go to university, then he can get or he can learn Baluchi as a foreign language. This is the height of hypocrisy over there going or, or exploitation of the land and the people. So uh, our archive, we have one good thing, our history has been kept in uh, oral folklore and all, that's why we have preserved, we have got people who have preserved it by singing uh, the history, otherwise uh, we have a Baloch Academy created by the Pakistanis, uh, but uh, the people working over there are really, uh, I would say, genuine and honest Baloch. They are trying to preserve the Baloch culture. Can I just can I just say something? Um, you see, if you take Baluchistan, Baluchistan is one of the richest. If you get all the resources, I mean, with any standard, if it, if you just uh, um, employ any standard, Baluchistan, in relation to its population, is one of the richest uh, region nation in the region. So, and um, when Baluchistan um, became independent. It was one of the nation that in that region you had kind of like those people that were in, in charge, they were kind of like social democrats, basically. And in considering the situation at that time, um, prior to Pakistan occupation. So with all the resources, if you take all the resources and look at the state of Baluchistan now, Baluchistan now is one of the poorest nation, not just in the region, in the world. It's basically in the world. And it's just creation of Pakistan and Iran. Just the reason is that is because of occupation. Thank there you. is no any other reason. Thank you, Let's get lost on this side. Let's. Yes, uh, in the previous session, uh, someone from the floor asked, why don't the Western powers support the Kurdish national movement as a bulwark against Islamic fundamentalism? And a similar issue arose here. And as uh, Mr. Mari rightly pointed out, I mean, Western powers have systematically supported Islamic fundamentalism. And here we might bring in a, my favorite aphorism from Noam Chomsky, who said, the Western powers espouse principles and pursue interests. Mm -hmm. And they have pursued those interests by systematically deploying Islamic fundamentalism against secular nationalist movements because those movements have a democratic accountability, which would mean national sovereignty over human and natural resources against the ravages of Western imperialism. This should be obvious to everyone here. 
So two questions. Why should we expect that the Western powers will ever support secular nationalist movements? I can't think of any recent example where they've done so. And secondly, who are the allies, potential allies, then, of the Baloch secular nationalist movement? Can I answer this? Yeah, sure. Um, look, um, I think um, taking history, past history, is really not a good way to see what's going on in the future. Uh, it's the nature of the social sciences. There is no way, okay, you know that, okay, it's going to be like past. Now, for the West, okay, sooner or later, if they use the literature of democracy, human <coughs> rights, liberalism, all these sort of phrases they use, okay, and they know that sooner or later, stability of the region, even if they all, is there, is, it is in their own interest that we to go and, uh, I don't know, invest in those, those sort of regions, is the stability, stability, only stability comes, only stability comes like we had it in Eastern Europe, when there is kind of like liberal democracy. When you've got liberal democracy, you take all this pressure of people, keeping people for many, many years under pressure. And when you got kind of like this stability, it is mutually beneficial for West as well, for Baluch nation, or Kurdish nation, or Tamil nation in the long run. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going to move this side of the room now. I'm not going to take any questions from you. I'm going to be firm on that. I think I'm going to give a chance to people who haven't spoken before first. Yeah. Your hand was up. You go second there. Two people. You've spoken before. You've spoken a third. I'll give you a chance in fourth. That's the last one. Done. Okay, so, uh, I'm Ibrahim from Pakistan, and uh, I would, my first question is to you, sir. I would like to understand Balochistan as a province in Pakistan has its autonomous body, as a, uh, as a provincial assembly, which consists of, uh, as you would say, a lot of tribal leaders within, within itself. Uh, last year it was given a share of 100 billion, whereas Punjab was given 600 billion uh, as on basis of population. So where do you think the problem lies, sir? I would like to ask you that. Because your leaders like you, you you're, Mari, you, you're a tribal leader. And there are other tribal leaders who have been in Balochistan for a very long time. And my second question would be to the chair. Uh, we, we're discussing a lot of occupied uh, uh, territories here. But I don't uh, understand why Kashmir is not on the agenda today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, First of all, I would say Balochistan is an occupied territory because you have to go into the history and see how it became part of Pakistan. Uh, any any signature taken by anyone uh, to concede that, that land by force is is uh, occupation. So first of all, I would go into that. Then you say that there are funds being allocated uh, to Balochistan more than the Punjab. Uh, it, it, it is, might be uh, the case, but the thing is, we are not talking about funds over here. This is identity of a uh, nation, which was forcefully <coughs> occupied by its neighboring country. So if, if you think that's going to compensate my identity, if you give 100 million or 100 billion, 100 trillion, uh, I will leave uh, and say I'm no more Baloch, I'm Pakistani because I'm getting uh, loads of money from there. But where's my identity? That, where's my pride? Where's my history? Where I, my history is being diluted by a nation which is born just 65 years, uh, 65 years ago. And my history is 6,000 years ago. So I've got a long, bigger history, richer history, and a better history. Why should I join Pakistan where my people are being massacred? There has been five major military operations in Balochistan in the past six decades. And thousands of people have been murdered, extrajudicially killed. Thousands of people have disappeared since the past 60, 000, uh, 60 years. And we don't even know where they are. They are taken by, uh, from their homes by the Pakistani intelligence agencies. And still people ask us to support that nation. Yes, I do believe there, there is a parliament. I was member of assembly, and I've seen how corrupt it is. And how corrupt it was trying to make me 
they are being part of it. I was told, make as much money, not directly but indirectly. The circumstances were there. The, the, the situation was created. Make money, be a rich man, but forget about your people. I remember a few deals which the Iranians came, the Ch Japanese came and spoke to me as a representative of Balochistan state. And from Islamabad, the answer was, you have got no right to speak to no, none of these people. We are the people who decide in Islamabad, not the Baloch people. So I got the message, and that's why I'm standing here asking for independent Balochistan. <laughs> The question to me was why the Kashmiri community is not here. First of all, we are aware that they're very, very important. I wrote to only contact I had whether they could go a meeting. But it so happens to be Camp Academy working with the Kurdish community, the Tamil community very closely, with the Basque community, the Baloch community very closely. We have links with them. So their people work with us all the time. We have, you know, uh, the Kashmiri groups over here have not contacted us or when we've been invited, they've not come around to build links with us. So the four groups in the cases as well has been there. I think Estella would like to add something to it as well. The Shmiri groups have worked with us from 2000 to 2003. Okay? Yeah. We were part of an attempt to challenge the anti-terrorism laws here. The GKLF had two or three cases of court. So I'm saying we have contacts with them. Unfortunately, yeah. both of the leaders of the groups yeah. are presently not in London, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But they do know about these attempts and they do support the work that we are doing. Yeah. So, but if you know others, please put them in touch. Yeah, when that really means coming to our monthly meetings and then and, and building links, that means coming to our monthly meetings and building links and all that, yeah? So that's a long-term work. Now, what I'm going to ask, do, there's one person here, so I don't want to miss you. Yeah, your, your question. Uh, yeah, it's regarding the presentation of people of Pakistan. Um, as you have been um, terming it occupation or annexed or whatever, uh, I want to know when, I mean, as you call it, Pakistan occupied Pakistan. As far as I know, Pakistan is a tribal society, and in 1948, those leaders of the tribes, they decided, Han of Kalat, you still regard him as your leader. And at that time, Han of Club decided to go with Pakistan and Balochistan went with Pakistan. And uh, when Balochistan issue comes up, the main problem is like uh, economic, uh, deprived economically and military actions. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, those same people who are leading this movement now, these people were most of the times either governors or chief ministers of the province when these military operations were carried out. And these same people were have been over the 50, 60 years have been the leaders of the Balochistan, and I think they are the ones who are responsible for depriving the people of Balochistan economically. And now once they are not in power, they are, I mean, it's up to you. Yes, uh, yes you're right. Uh, that's why I'm saying uh, I did, uh, although my father was uh, not really happy about me becoming part of the system here, because we have been close politically, and he said, um, you know, you will not get your rights. I've tested this country. We, he was a uh, part of National Assembly and Provincial Assembly. At that time, there was Bangladesh as well, Bangladesh. So he said, uh, you'll get nowhere with this country. Again, but I tried it personally. I saw that there's no chance. As you say, we were the governors. I'm going to tell you, at the age of 11, I became a refugee in this country and in Afghanistan. And I was away from my, from my country for 12 years, the first time. This is the second time I'm a refugee, and again, it's 12 years I'm away from my country. Most of my life I've been a refugee outside my country, and that's the Pakistani line. You people have been at the helm of all powers, and you have corrupted. No, those people who are Sardars and working with the Pakistan, they are in. Baluchistan in Islamabad and those people who want independence either they are in grave or they have been exiled elsewhere. That's the answer. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, yeah, yeah, I can tell you, yeah, your turn now, please. Actually, I'm with the last question from this side. I think I'm going to offend a few people here. 
I think I've found all the listings here, actually. Cut in. Be my guess. <laughs> I don't want to speak against any religion. Which country? Which country? Yeah, this is a. This is a. Yeah, you probably know the answer. Which country calls itself boldly the land of pure Islam? <laughs> which country has a capital city? which is called the abode of Islam. <laughs> the point is really, by the way, Pakistan is now the Islamic State of Pakistan. In fact, Pakistan became defunct in 1971, when there was a mass genocide and millions of women and children and men were killed, and hundreds of thousands of women and girls and boys were raped by predominantly Punjabi army. But the Punjabi is an ethnic group and a region, which is a landlocked region, if you look at the state of what is ex-West Pakistan. If, Afghanistan, if, if Balochistan becomes independent, then it's left with uh, Sin and the Northwest frontier. Well, Afghanistan, as you know, has its own view on that, Afghanistan. And some Sins also have them. What will happen is the Punjab will become part of other remain Pakistan, the land of pure Islam, well, will have to share its identity with Sikhs and Hindus as it did in the past. In fact, it was a Sikh kingdom. The problem is the British created all this problem. Unfortunately, it's a sad fact that the mess was created by Britain as it fled South Asia in 1947-48. Can you ask a question? Left, can you ask a question? The point I'm really making is that uh, it's something that Pakistanis do. There are many Pakistanis, I think some of them are probably members of the ISI. The United States of America apparently is stopping that. The fact is the Punjabis, like the journalist here I was speaking to earlier, I must tell you, he, I was asking him what why why did they blame Punjabi, this journalist here who spoke earlier, Pakistan, yeah. he said he was Punjabi. So I asked him, why did they blame, why did the Baluchis blame you? He said, we are the majority, so they blame us. I said, in 1971, you were not the majority, you were a minority. So the point is, the argument is always being chopped and changed. The fact is, Pakistan has only existed because of the court. West Pakistan, I should say, has only existed under Punjabi hegemony because of Cold War. Sito and Sento are no longer there. Yeah, yeah. There is a, no reason for the West or China or Russia to continue this Punjabi empire, Punjabi Muslim empire. But the Punjabi Muslims were always the low caste Hindu purveyors in Punjab until the British came along and employed some of them the army. And this is often forgotten. This is a very poor region. The canals were built by British, you know, with our money, the India's money, to help settle <coughs> the, uh, the potential rebellious sepoys who were retired. This is how Punjab, West Punjab was created. I think this is important to stop. Thank you very much. Is there a question?